Hi, this is JP from Nota Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus, and this time we are looking into the cards that come in the Gambit uh, Marvel Champions Hero Pack. So, let's get started. So, uh, Gambit comes with the pre built Justice deck, and let's start by going through the signature cards that come with Gambit. So, first off, we have Remy Lebo which is the alter ego side of Gambit. Uh, Remy has uh, three recovery, a mutant and thief traded, thief extraordinaire action, ward exhaust Remy Le uh, Lebeau, and look at the top two co cards of the encounter deck, discard one of those cards and remove threat from a scheme equal to the number of boost icons on that card. So uh, that is actually an interesting ability there haven't been a hero yet that can uh, affect the main scheme or, or a scheme in play when in alter ego, so that's interesting. So let's neck and the hand size is 6 and hit points is 9, so let's look at the hero side next. Uh, Gambit has a 1 toward, 2 attack and defense of 3, a thief and x-men traded. Uh, charge the card action, place one charged counter here, limit once per round, throw that card, interrupt when you play an attack event, remove up to three charged counters from here, that event deals plus one damage for each counter removed, hand size is five and hit points is nine. So I bet that Gambit is uh, focused on getting those charges, so he is charging up the uh, kinetic energy on those cards and throwing them uh, and the more charges you have the more effect you get. So let's start looking at the other cards that come in the signature set. First off we have the signature ally rogue, a four cost uh, ally with two toward and two attack uh, three hit points, aerial and excellent traded. Reduce the cost to play Rogue by one for each charge counter on your identity. And uh, Rogue comes into play with toughness and can be committed as a wild resource. So, um, comboing really well with the charges. So if you get your charges built up, uh, you only pay one for Rogue. So that is a really good deal. Next up we have uh, the Thieves Guild. It is a one cost support, guild traded, alter ego response. After you resolve your thief extraordinary ability, exhaust the thief's guild, remove one threat from a scheme. If this uh, removes the last threat from that scheme, draw one card, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Again, boosting the alter ego action, so maybe uh, Gambit really wants to be in alter ego more than other. Uh, heroes. Uh, next up we have a one cost upgrade Gambit's uh, staff and uh, it is an item and weapon traded upgrade. Hero interrupt when an enemy attacks exhaust Gambit's staff deal one damage to that enemy and this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay well pretty straightforward. Next we have Gambit's guild armor. It is a one cost upgrade armor and item traded. Hero responds after Gambit defends against an attack ta and takes no damage, exhaust Gambit's guild armor, ready Gambit. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, well, uh, Gambit has a defense of 3, so uh, you could defend against a low hitting minion or a minion that it doesn't hit for more than 3, so you get to ready after defending and that's that's a good good ability then we have charged card and there are three copies of this event in the deck a charged card is a two cost event attack and superpower traded hero action attack deal four damage to an enemy for this attack if gambit throw the card ability ability removes at least one counter this attack gains range two counters this attack also gains piercing Three counters, this attack also gains overkill. So that's an interesting card. I have to see it in play before I can say <laughs> if it's good or bad, and it can be committed as a physical resource. 
then we have Royal Flush. And there are two copies of this event. Uh, Royal Flush is a three cost event attack, superpower traded, hero action attack, place one charge, counter on Gambit, deal zero damage to an enemy, uh, deal zero damage to an enemy, and deal zero damage to an enemy. So at first, this seems like a poor event, but if you remove three counters from Gambit while playing this, uh, you will be dealing 9 damage in total and you can split it, uh, split it between different targets or just pile it on one um, target and that can be committed as uh, energy resource. Next up we have Natural Agility, which is a zero cost event. There are two copies of this. Uh, natural Agility is a defense and superpower trade event. Uh, zero cost, hero interrupt defense. When you defend against an attack, place one charge counter on Gambit. For each charge counter, counter on Gambit, you get plus one defense for that attack. And this can be committed as an energy resource. So again, this combos really well if you want to defend with Gambit and have the Gambit's armor in place. So you get to ready Gambit after he defends if you don't take any damage. Uh, then we have uh, Creole uh, Charmer. Uh, there are two copies of this event in the deck. Uh, so Creole Charmer is a two cost event. Four traded alter ego action port. Remove three threats from a scheme. If this removes the last threat from that scheme, confuse the villain. It can be committed as an uh, energy resource. Okay, and lastly, in the signature cards we have a uh, resource card, which is a molecular, molecular acceleration. There are two copies of this. Uh, hero interrupt, when you spend this card, place one charge counter on Gambit, and this can be committed either as, uh, or, uh, as an energy and uh, physical resource. So it co counts as two resources. And if you have a card that needs one of those resource types, then this uh, satisfies either one of those. Okay, well, those were the signature cards. So next up, we'll look at the justice cards and uh, basic cards that come in the pre-built deck. First up, we have Bishop. Uh, Bishop is a three cost ally with two forts, zero attack. Uh, the attack has two uh, consequential damages and uh, Bishop has the X-Men trait and 3 hit points. Response, after an enemy attacks you, place one energy counter here. And uh, the attack has an asterisk which is uh, interrupt. When Bishop attacks, remove each energy counter from him. For each counter discarded this way, he gets plus 2 attack for this attack, so a maximum of 6 attack. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Next up we have Dazzler. The Dazzler is a 4 cost ally with 2 towards and 2 attack. Uh, X-Men traded and 3 hit points. Response after Dazzler enters play, confuse an enemy. And this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So uh, I think that will combo pretty well with Gambit because Gambit has a really powerful uh, ability on the alter ego side. So you could um, confuse the villain with this and go to Alter Ego and won't be um, in danger of getting traded out. Next we have Operative Skill. There are uh, three copies of this. So Operative Skill is a two cost upgrade. Skill traded uses three Operative Counters, max one per player. Interrupt when you thwart, remove one Operative Counter from here. That thwart removes one additional threat. This can be committed as an energy resource. Okay, uh, next we have a reprint of a Stealth Strike with new art, so I won't go into much detail on this. Uh, this is an attack event which deals 4 damage to an enemy and if that enemy is defeated, uh, you can also remove 2 threats from a scheme and that can be committed as a mental resource. It costs 3, so usually, uh, previously I haven't played this much because it's a bit overcosted for my liking. Then we have breaking and entering, and there are two, uh, I mean three copies of this. Uh, breaking and entering is a two cost event for traded. Play only if your identity has spy or thief trait action for remove three threat from a scheme. 
and this can be committed as a energy resource. Nothing that fancy. Uh, the spy and thief trades limit that you can play this only in uh, specific uh, heroes. So there's that. Uh, then we have a reprint of uh, Passion of Justice, two copies of this, so uh, it is a wild resource and uh, if you use it you for a thwart event you get to remove one extra uh, threat from a scheme. Then uh, we have a reprint of Professor X, nothing fancy there, a reprint of uh, X-Mansion, nothing special there. Then we have again uh, Beauty and the Thief. This was in the Rogue Hero pack also, but I'll read it now as it is a, a team up card for Gambit and Rogue. So, two cost event, attack and ward traded. Team up Gambit and Rogue, max one per deck. Hero action, attack or ward. Deal four damage to an enemy, remove four threat from a scheme, and this can be committed as an energy resource. So, really powerful if you have Gambit and Rogue in play at the same time. Then we have Hit and Run, three copies of this. Uh, this is again a reprint. Uh, I think this came in Gamora's Hero Pack earlier, and there is a new, new art on this. So it's a three cost event attack and thwart traded hero action attack slash thwart, deal two damage to an enemy, remove two threats from a scheme, and this can be committed as an energy resource. Next we have Mutant Education, three copies of this. It is a zero cost event. Uh, play only if your identity has the mutant trait. And uh, uh, we can only play this on the alter ego side of Gambit. And of course, it's an alter ego action. Choose up to two identity specific cards in your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck. If Axe Mansion is in play, draw one card. And this can be committed as an energy resource. And lastly, in the pre-built deck, we have the uh, basic uh, resource cards, energy, genius, and strength. So that is the pre-built deck. Uh, next, let's look at the uh, obligation and nemesis sets. Uh, so obligation for Gambit is guild business. Uh, give to Remy Lembo. Player, alter ego action, exhaust Remy Lebo and spend our uh, energy resource, remove guild business from the game. And uh, when this is uh, in play, uh, you get an extra encounter card. So you really want to get rid of this, but uh, as looking at the resource types in this pre built deck, there are a lot of um, energy resources, so you should be able to get rid of this, but you of course have to also exhaust Remy Lebo, so you can only get rid of this in Alter Ego. That's not that great, but it is what it is. Not the worst, uh, but not the weakest obligation. Uh, then we have the Gambit Nemesis set, which starts with Belladonna. Belladonna is a minion with two scheme and three attack with an asterisk, assassin and elite traded, five hit points, quick stride and toughness. Uh, Force response. After Belladonna attacks and defeats and character plays two threat on the main scheme. And this has three boost icons. So pretty beefy and hard to get rid of uh, Nemesis enemy. Then we have uh, the Nemesis uh, side scheme. The Assassin skilled. Force response. After Assassin minion attacks and defeats a character plays two threat here. And this has a uh, Acceleration icon and three boost icons and comes into play with four threats. So you really want to get rid of this as fast as possible because of the acceleration icon. Then we have Guild Assassin, which is a minion with one scheme and two attack with an asterisk. Assassin traded two hit points. Quick stride force response after Guild Assassin attacks and defeats a character plays one threat on the main scheme. There are actually two copies of this and it has two boost icons. So a lot of minions for a nemesis set. And lastly we have assassination attempt which is a treachery. When revealed each assassin minion attacks you even if you are in alter eco form. 
and if there are no assassin minions in play, so then counter deck and discard file for an assassin minion and reveal it, and it has one boost icon. So pretty nasty nemesis set, my liking, and especially in true solo. So uh, then uh, we have some uh, new uh, aspect cards for aggression. We have the war room. There are of course three copies of this. So the war room is a one cost support location traded. Max one per player. Responds after an ally attacks and defeats a minion. Exhaust war room. Remove one threat from a scheme. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So a pretty cheap and good way for an aggression deck to remove threat at least a bit. But of course it, uh, you need to uh, defeat a minion for it to function. Lastly, we have a new basic uh, event, uh, X-Men Instruction. It is a zero-cost event. They only if your identity has the mutant trait. Uh, alter ego action, choose up to two X-Men allies in your discard pile and shuffle them into your deck. If X-Mansion is in play, draw one card. And this can be committed as um, energy resource. And that is all the player cards that come in this pack, but we also received a new uh, modular encounter set, which is the Exodus set, and it has the Exodus minion uh, with one, one scheme and one attack, uh, Acolyte, Elite, Psionic traded, 6 hit points, Retaliate 1, and Villainous. Uh, when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Psionic Shield attachment and attach it to Exodus Shuffle. And uh, Exodus has three boost icons. So, a uh, quite nasty minion. Then we have Herald of Avalon, uh, side scheme. When defeated, the player who defeated this scheme searches the encounter deck and discard pile for Exodus and reveals him and uh, shuffle. And this has an extra encounter card symbol and comes into play with six threats and has three boost icons. So you will see Exodus a lot if you use this modular set. Uh, then we have uh, two attachments, which are the Psynic Shield uh, attached to a minion, otherwise Psynic Shield can search. A forced interrupt when attached minion would leave play instead of he uh, instead heal all damage from that minion and put it back into play. Then discard this attachment and it gives plus one scheme and plus one attack and has two boost icons. So a really nasty um, attachment which will keep a minion in play for a long time. And you might end up getting multiples of this. Because it doesn't say that it can't have multiples. And lastly, we have Acolyte Frenzy. Uh, there are two copies of this in the set, and Acolyte Frenzy is a treachery. When revealed, each Acolyte minion engaged with you activates against you. If you are not engaged with an Acolyte minion, this card can search. It, it has a boost ability. You are stunned and confused, and it has the boost ability symbol. Okay, well, that was everything that comes in the Gambit Hero Pack. So, I'm really looking forward to getting Gambit into play. I will sleeve up the deck and try it out against some scenario from the Mutant Genesis box. Haven't decided which one yet, but I'm really looking forward to playing Gambit because Gambit is one of my all-time favorite X-Men. So, hoping that Gambit functions really well in True Solo so I can play him more. But, hope you guys found this um, Hero Pack Focus useful. To make your decision if you want to get gambits in your collection. Thanks for watching and until next time.